United Launch Alliance has been working on Vulcan since 2014. In the time since then, there have been quite a few delays with the main flight originally scheduled to happen in 2019. These delays had to do with ULA's progress, Blue Origin and the BE-4, and even Astrobotic who's providing the primary payload on this initial launch. One of the most recent delays came late last year when Astrobotic requested more time in order to prepare their CLPS moon lander. This changed the launch date from quarter 4 of 2022 to the first quarter of 2023. However, now in January, it looks like important mission milestones and final preparation that was expected to have happened by now have not. Combine this with fewer updates from the company and it looks like some more delays may be announced soon. This being said, Astrobotic seems to now be making good progress on the Peregrine Lunar Lander. Enough progress that the payload should be ready and delivered in the coming months. Here I'll go more in depth into some of the possible delays ULA and Vulcan are facing, the history of attempting to launch this rocket, what to expect in the future, and more. Not long ago in October 2022, ULA released an update on Vulcan's progress and some of its final upcoming milestones in preparation for launch. Here, ULA was proceeding to a first flight of Vulcan in the first quarter of 2023, to align with a request from its payload customer Astrobotic, who will be flying its Peregrine Lunar Lander to the moon for NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services or CLPS program. At the time of this update, the first Vulcan launch vehicle was nearing completion in ULA's factory in Decatur, Alabama, and was awaiting installation of its BE-4 engines. In terms of specific dates, ULA expected to ship the completed vehicle to the launch site in November. In addition, they pointed out that once at the Cape, Vulcan would undergo a final series of tests to verify its readiness for flight, consisting of multiple tanking tests and a wet dress rehearsal, culminating in a flight readiness firing in December, which will be the final step prior to launch. Following the successful final testing, Astrobotic and the other payloads would be installed on the launch vehicle. Now it's January of 2023, and Vulcan has still not been delivered to the Cape. Yesterday, ULA CEO Tori Bruno was asked, has the Vulcan core been sent to Cape Canaveral, and when is the Vulcan flight currently scheduled? Tori responded only hours ago saying, soon and yes. This confirms that this process is a couple months behind schedule at this point. Less than a month after this original update, both Blue Origin VE4 engines had not only been delivered but were installed on Vulcan, one of the final steps necessary prior to launch. This brings up the question of what is causing these slight delays. As far as the payload, which originally shifted the launch to 2023, Astrobotic recently reported that they were ahead of schedule and completing some final testing. This first commercial mission is part of ULA's requirement to meet the U.S. Space Force certification of its new launch vehicle. Mark Peller, Vice President of Major Development, stated, We are committed to ensuring we fly the first certification mission and stay on schedule to achieve U.S. Space Force certification of Vulcan in advance of our first national security space mission in the fourth quarter of 2023. With so many different important missions riding on this launch vehicle, more delays could push back a lot of exciting projects. Later this year, for example, Dream Chaser Tenacity is set to lift off for the first time on top of Vulcan. This launch is expected to be the second ever launch of Vulcan and happened not long from now in the third quarter of this year. As of right now, all we can do is wait and see what progress is made and keep an eye on Vulcan and its schedule. Now that we know more about some of the delays Vulcan is facing, we can take a closer look at this rocket's history and development. Starting back in early 2014, geopolitical and U.S. political considerations led to an effort by ULA to consider the possible replacement of the Russian-supplied RD-180 engine, used on the first stage booster of the Atlas V. In September 2014, ULA announced that it had entered into a partnership with Blue Origin to develop the BE-4 liquid oxygen, or LOX, and liquid methane engine to replace the RD-180 on a new first stage booster. The engine was already in its third year of development by Blue Origin, and ULA said it expected the new stage and engine to start flying no earlier than 2019. In 2015, it was announced BE-4 rocket engine production would be expanded to increase production capacity for testing. The following January, ULA was designing two versions of the Vulcan first stage. The BE-4 version has a 5.4 meter or 18 foot diameter to support the use of less dense methane fuel. In late 2017, the upper stage was changed to the larger and heavier Centaur 5 and the launch vehicle was renamed Vulcan Centaur. The single-core Vulcan Centaur will be capable of lifting 30% more than a Delta IV Heavy, meeting the NSSL requirements. Moving on to 2018, the USAF released an NSSL launch service agreement with new requirements, delaying Vulcan's initial launch to April 2021, after an early postponement to 2020. In June 2021, Astrobotic reported that they needed more time to prepare Peregrine, delaying the first flight of Vulcan to 2022 and later to 2023. This brings us to today as the company and customers try to finish final preparations for this launch. In terms of actual testing, on October 21st, the United Launch Alliance Vulcan Centaur program successfully completed the initial round of Pathfinder activities at Cape Canaveral by performing a countdown test to rehearse all aspects of launch day operations. 
the flight configuration Vulcan core stage, named the Pathfinder Tanking Test, or PTT Booster, was transported 2.7 miles or 4.3 kilometers from the Space Flight Processing Operations Center to Space Launch Complex 41 aboard the Vulcan launch platform on Monday, October 4th. The rocket systems were powered up and tested while a separate team of technicians at SLC-41 configured the pad for cryogenic fueling operations. At T-minus three hours, the countdown entered a planned hold to clear the launch complex and pull launch controllers to verify readiness to proceed into fueling. The ULA launch director authorized the go to continue the test. Once the clocks resumed ticking, thermal conditioning of the liquid oxygen system, called chill down, began at the pad. That was followed a few minutes later by the liquefied natural gas or LNG propellant system chill down. Evaluating the thermal characteristics and amount of time needed for chilling were key objectives of this day of launch rehearsal. LNG began flowing into the Vulcan PTT stage first, once chill down parameters were satisfied. Liquid oxygen chill down of the internal feed line within the stage followed the ground infrastructure chill, and then the tank filling commenced. Overall, the test was a success and provided a lot of valuable information for the company. Vulcan is a very big deal for ULA considering this rocket is expected to become the company's new workhorse. Vulcan Centaur is a two-stage-to-orbit heavy lift launch vehicle with a payload capacity to LEO ranging from 10,800 kg to 27,200 kg, depending on the number of solid rocket boosters. In addition to the two primary BE-4 engines, Vulcan integrates up to six Northrop Grumman Graphite Epoxy Motor or GEM 63XL solid rocket boosters, or SRBs. They are constructed out of a graphite epoxy composite with a throttle profile designed into the propellant grain. GEM solid supported the Delta II and Delta IV rockets, and the GEM-63 variant has already flown on ULA's Atlas V rocket. For upper stage propulsion, Vulcan will rely on two RL-10C engines. Logging an impressive record of nearly 400 successful flights and nearly 700 firings in space, RL-10 engines, manufactured by Aerojet Rocketdyne, harness the power of high-energy liquid hydrogen. The RL-10 boasts a precision control system and restart capability to accurately place payloads into orbit. Vulcan adapts and evolves technologies that were developed for the Atlas V and Delta IV rockets of the USAF's EELV program. The first stage propellant tanks have the same diameter as the Delta IV common booster core, but will contain liquid methane and liquid oxygen propellants rather than the Delta IV's liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. We are seeing this new propellant mixture on a lot of modern rockets, including Relativity's Terran 1, SpaceX's Starship, and Blue Origin's New Glenn. Currently, ULA is even working to reuse the two first stage BE 4 engines using the smart technology. ULA estimated this technology would reduce the cost of the first stage propulsion by 90% and 65% of the total first stage cost. By 2020, ULA had not announced firm plans to fund, build, and test this engine reuse concept, though in late 2019 they stated they were still planning to eventually reuse Vulcan's first stage engines. Something that will not be attempted on Vulcan's main flight, but we could expect to see in the future. United Launch Alliance is trying to launch Vulcan for the first time. Based on past updates from the company, it looks like the launch vehicle might be facing some more delays. Vulcan was scheduled to be delivered in November and complete a flight readiness firing last month in December, but unfortunately this hasn't happened yet. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.